بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The last thing I want to share with you before, and this is again the introduction, the last part of my introduction, is that when we read the Quran or when we try to understand the Quran, there are some things I want you to deconstruct in your mind, deprogram, get them out of your system. The first of those things is this is a book for knowledgeable people. This is a book for people that have a lot of knowledge, that are very well versed in religion, that are scholars or imams or speakers or khatibs or you name it. That's, that's who this book is for. I want you to, get out to, to let this out of your mind that when you read the Quran you're thinking, this book, <coughs> this book is a very academic kind of exercise. Oh, it's a religious spiritual text. I don't even want you to think about it like that first. You know what I want you to think about it like? You know when you have a real problem, a lot of us have problems. We have family problems, we have marriage problems, we have problems with our in-laws. But you say that's normal, right? So there's a problem with our in-laws. Some of you have problems with your kids. Some kids have problems with their parents. Friends have problems with each other. Some of you have problems at work. Some of you have problems in business. We have all kinds of problems. And when people have really bad problems, you know what they do? They go talk to a friend. Now can I talk to you? This thing's really bothering me. And you call a friend and you're on the phone with them for an hour talking about your problem. Right? This is what m most of us do. And hopefully people you talk to about your problems are in your family. But for most of us the problem is the family, so you gotta find somebody else. <laughs> right? So... Right? So... And, and, and this gave birth to really a gigantic scam industry, even though there are some very legitimate psychologists out there, but a lot of therapists are just crooks. They'll call you over, charge you $350 an hour and say, tell me how you feel. <laughs> tell me about your problems. And you'll talk about your problems for an hour, and at the end of that they'll say, do you feel better? <laughs> I'll say, no, you're supposed to tell me something. I was like, no, no. My way of getting you to feel better is to talk about your problems. But you know, when we talk to Allah about our problems, then He gives us counsel. He gives us therapy. He gives us advice. That's what the Qur'an is supposed to be. When you're having problems, when you're having, you ha and all of us do have problems, the Qur'an is supposed to be Allah giving you and me very relevant advice for my life and your life. It's a personal relationship. It's not an academic relationship. It's not this superficial kind of relationship. First and foremost, it's a personal relationship. And when Allah is giving instructions, even when He's telling stories of the past, even when He's telling stories of the past, you're supposed to not be thinking only about the past. What should you be thinking about? Yourself. <coughs> I'll give you one example of that and I'll go on. I'll give you a scary example of that. 